Brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the 32nd Sunday of Ordinary Time, Year C, 2022. Usually, I start my reflection with the first reading, continue with the Gospel and conclude with the second reading. But today, I have entitled this Sunday, SOS Sunday, Save Our Souls Sunday. And the motivation for having this title or theme for our meditation comes from the prayer of St. Paul in the second reading of today, where Paul says to us, I pray that God may deliver you from perverse and wicked people. And he goes on to pray, I pray that God will guard you from the evil one. From the tune of Paul's prayer, from the words of Paul's prayer, he is saying, save our souls, O Lord. Why would Paul pray this way? From the context of the liturgical readings of today, let's go to the first reading and see why that prayer is important. Imagine the extermination of a mother and her seven sons on a single day. A woman says she has the legitimate right to practice her religion, Judaism. The system says no. The system obliges her to abandon her religious practices, to adopt and accept a new way of life a new system of living and on and the authority of the word of god on her conviction about her faith the faith in which she brought up her seven sons she says no and she accepts death and encourages her seven sons to accept death situations like this call for Paul's prayer and the second reading of today, that God should deliver us from perverse and wicked people. Because perverse and wicked people kill other people, refuse people the right to be different, refuse people right to live in accordance with their consciences and their religious convictions. So this first reading of today reminds us of why Paul's prayer is important. Because our society today faces the same kind of reality. That quite a number of people living on the planet Earth are forced to either accept to change and abandon their religious faith and practices or be put to death. But the first reading of today tells us the fundamental conviction that leads people to accept death instead of change is when they are convinced about their faith when they are convinced that life physical life here and now is not the end of the human life and the human journey when anyone is convinced that there is heaven that there is life beyond the physical life then such a person is ready if need be, relinquish the physical life because of the eternal life that follows, because of the mortality that follows. And that is the lesson from the first reading of today. And martyrdom only comes to those who believe that there is heaven, who believe and practice their faith. And that martyrdom is not a punishment, but an opportunity to be rewarded by God with heaven. So faced with abandoning our faith, faced with the choice either to play by the rules set by this world and its leadership that go contrary to our faith. That is the time we know who is actually a believer. The first reading of today, mother encourages her sons there is life everlasting. 
do not cling to this present life unnecessarily. At some point you must decide that heaven is what opting for rather than remaining on this planet earth on the dictates of human beings and their abandonment of God's commandments. Yes, it's not always that we have to choose between life and death. It is not always that our faith obliges us to make that distinction or that choice. Sometimes, when the faith itself is not well reasoned out, examined, properly taught, there could be injustices within the faith system itself. And that is what we have in the Gospel of today. That just as we pray in the second reading that God should deliver us from perverse and wicked people, and that God should guard us from the evil one, Jesus shows us that we have to be aware of religious practices that fail to respect the dignity of the human person. Aspects of religious beliefs that do not encourage fidelity to the vision and inspiration of God's scriptures and the purpose of God for the human person. Jesus says, a woman should not be turned into a sexual object. A woman, because she has no children, does not make her less human than women with many children. That the reason for which God has created the woman is not just exclusively that she must have children, and that she should not be passed from man to man to man, even if they were brothers. No, that our God respects the human person even when he or she decides not to be married. And that is why the question put to him about the relevance and importance of marriage, he says marriage is good, but you do not become a slave because you've opted for marriage. He says marriage has got to be in accordance with the will of God. And that when you lay too much importance, importance on anything earthly, you might be failing to realize that God is immortal and he has created us for immortality. And when God says to Moses, according to our gospel reading in the burning bush, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Jesus says to us, God wasn't speaking in the past. God speaks always in the present because God is immortal and God has created the human person for immortality and he says that is what is more important imagining that we we'll continue our, married, our marital lives or even our business and riches in the world to come is mistaken theology that here on earth, earthly existence demands different things from the human person. But eternal life is something altogether different. Not exactly the same as what we are living here and now. And so within a religious system, we must have our eyes open to always ask ourselves the will of God for the human person. And what is it that is most important and essential for our lives? And Jesus will say to us, love of God and love of neighbor. And that is how we overcome wicked people when we love. Out of love, we die for love. And because of love, we serve our brothers and sisters. And so we ask the Lord on this SOS Sunday, Save Our Souls Sunday, as Paul prays in the second reading, that God may deliver us from wicked and perverse people. And that God will guard us from the evil one. So at the end of our race on earth, we may have heaven as our reward.
May Almighty God bless and keep us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.